Now, each year, more than 17 million people die from cardiovascular disease. 80% of them live in the developing world. Professor Shaya Sheikh is the former president of the World Heart Federation. He's in Australia for the United Nations Conference on Development and Global Health, and he joins us now. Professor, good morning and thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. With I'm staggered at that figure. 80% of the 17 million people who die of cardiovascular disease, they're in the developing world. That's right. That's the, um, exactly why we're here today. Uh, the, the myth, you know, used to be that it's a disease of the developed world or even if in the developing countries it's a disease of the affluent class. That's right, it's an affluent uh, disease because, because right. we eat badly and the like right. and so we but get it. The uh, whole thing has changed in the last two, you know, two, three decades. This has become now what we call like, the, you know, unfortunately, there's a reverse relationship that the more poor people become more likely victims. How does, how does that work? How do they develop? You see, heart what uh, you know, you, we say it's the disease of the lifestyle. I mean, if you just say the, the smoking, the way we eat, and the lack of physical activity. Right. So that's basically. I mean, if you just want me to sort of sum it up in a very small uh, one sentence, uh, that is what has happened to uh, most of these countries. People are not dying of infectious diseases. They live a little longer. There's a you know huge urbanization without planning. And people are adapting to the so-called Western lifestyle uh, without having the protection. I see. So, so they are just becoming the victims. And the sad part is not only that 80% of these deaths, as you just said, of these uh, 18 million people, those who die of heart disease today, happens in developing world. The other sad part is really, this really sad part is that as compared to the West, you know, 50% of the deaths which occur with heart disease occur in the most productive time just under 50 years of age mm. as compared to in west or in the developed world or australia or new zealand it's like people in 70s you know mm. so not only that the more people are dying from cardiovascular disease in developing world they're dying at the most productive time creating a you know double problem how can authorities health authorities in those countries combat that try to reduce I, the i i rate. think this is um why you know like uh, one of my sort of uh, point for the lectures here at the um, meeting was that this is uh, something that doesn't one can control in one day you know mm -hmm. it's a long drawn uh, battle and the the next two decades are very important because the population in our countries unlike the western countries or the developed countries 50 percent or more is still under age 25 so in the next two decades if you don't something when they become adults middle-aged adults, we really have a, you know, we already, we call it like an epidemic situation. But if we do not do something for the next 20 years or so, we're going to have a hell of a problem because the health systems are not uh, geared enough to treat this or do a prevention programs. So that's the vicious cycle we caught in. Smoking would have to be central to this problem. You're, you're absolutely correct. I think if you ask me that if I had to say number one, number one is smoking. Yeah. And uh, throughout the world, the studies have shown yeah. that when you smoke, particularly in a younger age group under age 40, the 75% uh, of the people, the number one cause is smoking. And even if, in a, you know, your older age group, that you get the disease 10 years before as compared to a person who doesn't smoke. Even if you like to, you're comparing two people, uh, smoking not only causes it, it brings it up earlier. Professor, we can't have you here and not ask you about the impact of the floods in Pakistan. What, what's your understanding of the, the health impact of, of those devastating floods? Uh, you know, I'm um, not the best uh, public health person, but you can imagine, I mean, in a, you know, the, like the Secretary General UN was in Pakistan and he described this is probably the worst catastrophe we've had in the present time yeah. of history of our lives, you know, that we have seen. So you can imagine now that uh, what will be the health disaster. I mean, the, there are people now stranded in water, nothing to go by. I mean, just simple hygienic, you know, the human needs, mm. even to meet with them, there's just no modality. There's no, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable the mm. way what has happened. I mean, imagine yourself or me being asked to get out of the house without anything and no place to go. So I think the, the health uh, factor is, uh, I know the uh, WHO is warning, uh, but it's going to be, unfortunately, I think the impact will come in a little while, but it's going to be a devastating situation. We are already in and uh, without any uh, infrastructure in those areas, 
and uh, so it's, I, I think it's very scary what one, if one imagines that. And, and also what we've been hearing from our reporter um, there on, in Pakistan as well, Salisara in particular, that, that it's things that, that might not come immediately to mind, such as skin infections and the that's, like that have been picked up, that actually might end up seeing, being some of the most dangerous and fatal conditions mm, that that's. people can develop. So Pakistan is going to need medical infrastructure and assistance to deal with the ongoing effects of this for quite some time. That's true. And we really appreciate that. I know Australia does so much. And I mean, I think the, uh, I'm glad that you brought this up this morning on, uh, while we were on the air when lots of people are watching us that really I think we really appreciate and we really do need the help I mean I think uh, this is such a uh, the, the magnitude of the problem is so much that no country uh, you know I mean I was just uh, thinking that look at a country like US uh, with New Orleans you know Katrina yeah. five years they still haven't been able to come overcome and imagine Pakistan with thousands of miles within 20 million people that's like whole of Australia I mean if unfortunately something to say well everyone was affected in Australia imagine uh, what it would take to uh, overcome uh, the uh, health problem the so social problem the economic problem so it's I think uh, we need help and I if you allow me to say I we really appreciate the help and I was just saying or thinking that when you asked me uh, is that it's drop by drop which makes a storm you know mm. and makes a flood so I think everyone who puts in a pennies or a dollar is going to matter so you know, I think we can overcome this by the same same thing. Dr. Shah Sheikh really good to m meet you this thank morning you. thanks so much thank professor you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.